Hi, my name is Ariana and welcome to my channel. Usually I talk about writing here or read the stories I've written, stuff like that. But this vlog is going to be quite a bit different. If I wanted to be a touch edgy, I would say that mental illness became kind of a cool thing in the recent years. Yep, mental disorders can be a fad. And like most other fads born on the internet, this one is also pretty stupid. But Dumb as it is, I do think there is a bright side to it. It demystifies mental illness, it destigmatizes it, and most importantly, it allows people who actually suffer from various conditions to find out that they are sick, and that's the first step to getting help. But on the other hand, diagnosing yourself with mental disorder, this or that, to seem more interesting and to have something to talk about, something to put on your social media bio and to let you think you belong in some kind of group or another, it can lead to romanticizing mental illness, to simplifying difficult concepts, to making things that ruin the lives of people who genuinely suffer from those things, making those things seem less just something you can cope with, something that's quirky, something that's just a little bit weird, you know, not life ruining, making you miserable, making it impossible for you to le live a normal life, to have a family, to that makes you a burden on everyone you love. And that's really, really unfair. And I wish people didn't do it and I hope they will stop, I hope this fad will pass and we will move on with spreading the awareness of mental illness through science and education. Luckily, the absolute garbage fire of a disorder we will be talking about today is... well, there is just no way to make that shit go. The only way you would ever know somebody suffers from it is if they told you. Like, you know, I'm dying on the inside right now, could you please, I beg you, stop doing what you're doing right now and never do it again when I'm around. <laughs> Alternatively, they can be an annoying bitch or tyrant and just try to tell you stop doing this, stop doing this, stop doing this, never do this, stop it, stop it, stop it, I hate you. Then, in the absence of social conventions, they could also just flip a table in your face, smack a plate right on top of your head, or just... murder. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Mostly. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter, because etiquette forbids that. Yet despite being so uncool, I figured maybe it will be something interesting to talk about because there is a fair chance you've never heard of it, most people haven't, and it hasn't even been acknowledged as a mental disorder until recent years. I have spent most of my life not knowing that I was sick. And that's why I am so, so, so bent on spreading awareness of mental illness and letting people know they have it. So they can either seek help or at least understand what's wrong. Because I've had misophonia for my entire life, since I was like, I don't know, five maybe? That's when I became an annoying bitch. <laughs> and Nobody knew about it. Nobody knew what it was, so they thought I was just being... Well, I said it, right? And they tried to discipline me. They tried to teach me manners. Teach me to stop screaming. Teach me to stop stomping my feet under the table every time we ate together. If they knew, I actually simply had this bullshit, life would have been much better. Not just for me, but also for my family. Just like it is right now, ever since I've realized what the fuck is wrong with me. Sure. 
and just dashed to the mute button and said, My God, stop! <laughs> no? Well, good news, then you're probably healthy. When I learned of ASMR, I had a laugh. I opened one of the videos, one of the more popular ones, nothing controversial, just somebody doing some soft noises and whispering and 10 seconds in, I wanted to punch my screen. Supposedly people feel pleasant tingles on their heads when they listen to it, or at least they don't feel anything because normally it's not very annoying when somebody is just softly whispering and talking in a soft voice while making delicate noises drawing maps or just scratching things, scratching themselves. I want to cry. If somebody forced me to sit through an ASMR video, I would either want to cry or murder. <laughs> One of the two, maybe both at once. So what is misophonia? I talk a lot, a lot about murder and I hope you know it's a joke. Let's not go back to this era of, oh my god, he went to a psychiatrist, he must be a psychopath, he probably wants to murder me. No. But there is truth to the whole anger angle, because misophonia is basically a hatred of sounds. It's very specific sounds, it's usually sounds that are repetitive, it's most often sounds made by humans, although snoring animals also get me, but only if they snore, the way humans snore. So for instance, a dog, big dog snoring, just like human, will drive me up the wall, but a cat, cat snoring, like <coughs> something like that, I don't care. For some reason, it is mostly human sounds. Uh, tapping water, I don't really care, and it's a sound that can annoy a lot of people, but scratch your elbow, make any sort of food-related noise, snore, sniff, cough, anything like that and I will hate you temporarily until you stop doing that. <laughs> so, you know, if a misophoniac gets really angry at you and they pull out an axe, all you have to do is just stop making the sounds and the, the anger is gone. It goes away instantly. <laughs> so, so there's that. We're not really dangerous. Unless you really push it. Don't push it. No, I'm kidding, of course. <clears throat> It, it's very different for many people and one of the interesting things about misophonia is that for some reason the closer you are to somebody the more sounds can annoy you from them. It's absolutely counterintuitive because say I love my mom to death. I would just jump into a fire for her if, if that's what it called for. But it takes, I don't know, like this kind of amount of bread and she will have it in her mouth and then she will say something with that in her mouth which no normal, normal person wouldn't even notice and I'm like God stop meanwhile I suppose if some stranger on the subway did something like that it wouldn't be such a strong reaction I would get annoyed but it's just more noticeable maybe because we pay more attention to people we love Maybe that's how... I don't really know. There's just not enough data. I haven't done any research on this uh, for a while because a few years ago I tried and I found jack shit and I got really demotivated. Um, but yeah, at some point, for me, it became even worse than it was when I was a child. Right now, a sight of somebody chewing it's actually enough to annoy me. <laughs> I don't even have to see it. It's just this, the connection of the sound to the movement of somebody's jaw. Is, it's enough to make it annoying to me. I won't cry at the sight of it. I won't want to stomp my feet at the sight of it. But there is this, this annoyance. <sighs> and it's really, really annoying. Because, for instance, I watch... A fun YouTube video. I really want to see it. There is, for instance, one let's play on YouTube. On the entire world, there's one let's play of somebody playing a map in a game that I cannot finish because it's too difficult and I'm extremely interested in how he accomplished it. But he takes a drink every five minutes and I just cannot watch this video and enjoy it. Unless I just sit with my finger on 
move forward button, but that's just annoying, right? Especially if it's more than every five minutes. If somebody is streaming something or talking in a movie and they have food in their mouth, that's, it's, there's no enjoyment in it for me anymore. I just can't. I can't stand, I can't stand it. I will turn it off. There's, there, there, there's just that. So, as I've mentioned, most people don't know what misophonia is. And it's also one of the reasons why I figured I will make this video. And I'm sorry if I'm rambling, but this is a thing that's been haunting me my entire life. And it started at a very young age. I remember many scenes from my childhood when I was eating at the table with my family and say my father ate something crunchy and I would say stop making this sound, stop making this sound, stop making this sound and, they, and he would scream at me like stop telling me to stop making sounds, stop it, stop it, stop it and it would be a constant battle until I you know stopped saying it because I couldn't stand people screaming at me all the time so I would resort to stomping my feet under the table whenever someone started making noises and that would also <laughs> annoy my parents because they considered it's bad manners and I was just being a fussy child because they didn't know and it's difficult to blame anyone for it because how can you blame someone for lack of education in this case if they didn't even know it could be a thing I remember one of probably the most painful times that happened for me was it was Christmas it was Christmas Eve din dinner so it was like an evening I've been waiting for an entire year because I was a goddamn child and we loved Christmas and father would eat something crunchy and I just I couldn't stand it and I exploded and I said like don't do this after stomping my feet so many times and being told and he just started yelling at me and I just ran away crying because I couldn't help it. I couldn't help feeling so irrationally angry sitting at that table. I couldn't enjoy the food. I couldn't hear the music. I couldn't feel the Christmas. Nothing mattered. There was nothing there. Just the sound. And that's how it is. If somebody tries to talk to me and they have food in their mouth I will not hear what they're saying to me I will not be able to focus on it I will just be there angry of course I am 30 years old now I will not tell a stranger stop chewing or take the food out of your mouth until before you speak to me because I've been raised not to do that but it doesn't change the fact I will not hear a word they're saying so if I know somebody at least enough to tell them yes listen I have this stupid condition and I know it's annoying as fuck because it's annoying it's not annoying just to me it's annoying to everybody I have to spend some time with but I just have to tell them look if you talk to me eating I, I, I just won't hear so please don't do that and just knowing that it's a condition, being able to tell somebody, yeah, look, it's called misophonia. It works this, 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 and it is an actual mental disorder. It makes people so, it makes it so much easier for people to understand and just not make those noises be around you. But of course, just going around and telling people all the time every new person listen I have misophonia you can't eat when I'm around that's really not not plausible is it people eat all the time they like to do it it's not in bad taste to eat around other people as much as misophoniacs like me would like to outlaw it and just say you eat in the bathroom where you shit it's just as shameful that's that's our dream that's our utopia nobody eats nobody drinks around other people right you can't really do it so university right well we went to the cafeteria where people were talking about and trying to do project work and they would just order something to eat and I had to leave 
because I didn't want to be the weirdo that just has everybody adjust to my needs. Because yeah, this is this is the most problematic part of this disorder. I don't know of any treatment. I have been to psychologists, I have been to psychiatrists. Nobody has a fucking clue. Somebody said like, yeah, there is a th you could try the behavior behavioral therapy, like you put those annoying noises and then you put some song you like, and then if you listen to it enough, changing the volumes to make the noises louder and music quieter, it will go away. Fuck off, it will not go away. I've been trying that for 30 years. I've been doing the most exciting, fun, pleasant things while the noises were around and the only thing that did was I didn't enjoy the amazing things. I didn't enjoy the food, I didn't enjoy the occasions, I didn't enjoy the company. It doesn't do anything. It's, it's not like, it's not even that it got any better from doing all of that. I have been, ever since I've understood this disorder and my mom understood this disorder, and she accepted the fact that it's just it's just this kind of thing and we have to work around it. We have been eating with music. I have a cell phone or a, or a speaker or something near me and while people eat, I just focus on this music. And it makes it possible for me to be at the table with other people when they eat. This is the only way I found, but doing this for, I don't know, like, a decade now? It hasn't made it any easier, not this much easier, to accept the sounds when they are without this music, without this speaker in my ear. It's, it's not better. It's not better at all. It's getting worse. It has been getting worse ever since I was a child. So I don't believe that's, that's working. Maybe it could work for someone. I don't think it could work for me. So that's eating, right? But <laughs> it's not just eating. I told you, scratching dry skin, for instance, but that's at least rare. But something that can absolutely ruin your social interactions, snoring. I have gone with my mom to a spa. And you know where I slept? In the bathroom, with a pillow on my head, on the floor, because she snores, she doesn't snore very, very loudly. She snores like a normal woman. I had to sleep on the bathroom floor in a hotel. The thing is, normal, healthy person doesn't like snoring. That's very common. People hate snoring, right? Because it wakes them up. It makes it difficult to fall asleep because it's loud, right? That's normal. You can take stoppers, something to help you. With misophonia, at least my case, it is not about volume. I had a neighbor on the other side of a thick brick wall. And sometimes at night when I woke up, I could maybe hear him snoring. Maybe hear him snoring. This was so quiet, I had to focus to really make sure if I can hear this sound or not. But that was enough to make me cry in my bed, go downstairs and sleep on the fucking floor again. Because it's... The th sometimes it's even the threat of the sound. If somebody is sleeping near me and they breathe loudly because people falling asleep sometimes start to breathe a bit louder and I am not guaranteed that they don't snore. Say, I haven't heard them sleep before and I know they, they just stop at louder breathing, which doesn't bother me. If I know they can start snoring, this breathing will start to piss me off. And I will cry, I will not fall asleep. When I was 18, I went to, uh, to, States, to the States to visit my family, my aunt and uncle, brother of my grandmother. 
and they were lovely people and I was in New York and I was supposed to see the city explore meet new people I had a plan to become a volunteer I went to a few of those but most of the time I was miserable because I didn't get to sleep. My uncle snores extremely loudly. But it, as I said, it doesn't matter how quietly he hits sleep. My nights were going to the furthest room in the, in, the, in the apartment I could find, which was not very far because there were two available rooms outside of their bedroom. I would put on headphones with music so loud my head would hurt soon enough, but it still beats this anger and frustration. And I would just listen to this blast blasting music I was sick of until 8 in the morning when he would get up. And then I would go back to my bedroom and I would try to sleep for a moment before I had to get up and try to pretend I'm actually living my trip. It was miserable <clears throat> and I on top of that I felt so impossibly guilty because I was sure and knowing my aunt I was probably right thinking that they felt that their hospitality was not good enough for me or something which is not true I just needed to sleep and I wouldn't be so grumpy I wouldn't just spend my my day sitting at the computer and wanting to go home but sleep deprivation just it made everything feel bland and uninteresting and just tiring and that's probably the biggest thing this uh, this misophonia ruined for me and the biggest guilt it gave me and it's been 12 years since and I'm still kind of angry about it, I'll be honest with you. I'm still angry and I, I'm still kind of sad that I might have hurt their feelings unwittingly. And I was so sleep deprived, I didn't even think to explain it or apologize for it properly. And also, fair chance they wouldn't understand because, well, not a well-known disorder. And here's the thing, like I've mentioned, mental disorders can be used as a fad as something to help you get attention, to make yourself more interesting. The thing about actually having a disorder is that it just doesn't go away. <laughs> you cannot get bored of it, you cannot get tired of it, you cannot have a day where you pay less attention to it because you're busy with other more interesting topics on this day, so your two reds will not activate as often because it's not appropriate or your depression will not be so strong this day because, well, you actually feel pretty pretty interested in whatever your friends are doing. So you're not gonna be doing your quirky stuff today. Real disorders don't give a fuck what you want. <clears throat> they don't give a fuck if you're tired. They don't give a fuck if you're bored of them, frustrated of them, or if you're losing friends because of them, or if your family falls, falls apart because of them. They just are all the time. And granted, I would say as annoying and shitty as misophonia is, and as limiting as it can be for me, I wouldn't say it's nowhere it's anywhere near as awful as depression or other very serious problems that people also make light of and try to make them feel just quirky. <clears throat> but the thing is, for me, it's constant. Every day, every single moment, somebody says something with full mouth, makes an eating noise, snores, whatever, whatever the hell. I notice it. I get mad, I get just miserable, whatever. But people around me, they cannot be expected to always remember, to always adjust, 
to never eat, to never make whatever sound it is that is being a problem for me. They will forget because they, they don't have to deal with it all the time, right? For instance, I will meet my friends for, for a party at home and they know I have misophonia. They do care. Genuinely, they don't want to piss me off, but they will bring crackers or whatever crunchy foods because they just They don't remember they don't think about it because it's so natural to bring food to a party That's just what people do and it takes constant awareness of this condition to avoid triggering it <coughs> and it's either Somebody really knows me a lot and we spend a lot of time together and they understand and they have heard it so many times, my begging to stop this or that, that they, that they actually, just re it's in their head that they, they don't do this around me. But honestly, even my mom, who knows about it the most and who tries her hardest not to make my time around her miserable, even she will slip sometimes. And I cannot blame her for it. Because at the end of the day, it is my problem. And I always feel awkward and guilty and unpleasant when I have to choose between being mentally absent in a meet meeting with people or telling them not to do things they want to do so that they humor me or whatever. And there is also the fact that there is no golden middle. <clears throat> because normally, with many things, you can compromise, right? Somebody doesn't like, I don't know, TV playing, so the TV will play just half the time. It's a compromise, right? With this thing, there is no compromise. For me, it's either I am extremely pissed and miserable or or I'm not because there is no sound whatsoever and that sucks what can I say it sucks because I can't really compromise with anyone it's like if if somebody says okay so I won't eat this extra crunchy cucumber but I will eat this tomato that makes sounds in my face I will be mad again anyway so it's like why, why even bother it I don't know it's I'm sorry it's just it's really 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 hampers social relations and it's so frustrating to me when just when I just think about having to explain it all the time and having to ask people <laughs> it's just just so frustrating and so as you can imagine, if people sounds make you so angry, you want to slap them, you can't be around people a lot. And that's true. Luckily, I am quite a loner, personality-wise, but group excursions, for instance, going with friends and renting one hotel room because it's cheaper and more affordable, that's not gonna go. That's not gonna fly for me unless they are extremely non-snoring people. If somebody so, does something like, I can't. That that's out. I I will not sleep. And what what kind of trip is that? I cannot spend a lot of time with people who eat. Working in an office setting is a nightmare for me. It's a pros prospect of nightmare because people will eat. People will talk with their mouths full and I cannot go to work in, a, in, an, in an office and just keep telling people stop doing this, stop doing that, please don't eat, please don't drink like this, please don't gulp so loudly because they will fire me <laughs> or they will hate me or whatever and if I don't say anything then I won't do any work and they will fire me because I will be just distracted and I will be going to the bathroom to cry every 10 minutes or so. Like what am I supposed to do? I don't know. I am so lucky I work from home right now and I can kind of s sustain myself 
by doing whatever I'm doing. One of those things is this channel, which thank you very much for the patrons that actually give me some money that helps me supplement my earnings to, to sustain myself without going to an office job. Because I don't know how I would take it. it. It honestly got worse since I was at school. But even when I was in the, in high school, my friend often ate candy and I, and I just had to either ask her to stop, which she often did, just rolled her eyes at me. Hi, Carolina. Thank you for <laughs> kind of understanding. It meant a lot. And when other friends who didn't, who weren't that good friends of mine, just classmates, when they ate, I just had to peace out and I had to go to the bathroom or to the hallway, just walk around until they stopped. <clears throat> I don't know how to deal with this. I don't know how to be around people for longer, longer periods of time when I cannot have this music here or when I have to focus on something. When I have to listen to what they say and just spend time around them all the time in settings where they are allowed to eat. I don't know. I hope maybe in some few years there will be more research on misophonia. Some big heads and curly brains will figure out something that actually works. Then I will absolutely jump at the occasion because I think it's the single most limiting thing I have, single most annoying thing that makes me kind of annoying to be around. That's the truth. I will be annoying to be around for a longer period of time because nobody likes to change all of their habits. Nobody likes to not eat during movies. Nobody likes to always have music blazing when they eat whatever. And nobody likes to have to think about swallowing every last bite before opening their mouth, right? <clears throat> so, I don't know, I don't think anyone will ever see this video, but if somebody is like a scientist for some reason and type misophonia in YouTube to see if somebody's here whining about their lives, <laughs> hit me up, right? I can give you data or whatever the fuck to help with this shit, I don't know. So, you know, one thing good comes from it. There is one single good thing that comes from it. It shows you who really cares about how you feel around them. And if somebody is actually willing to sacrifice, to accommodate you, not to make you miserable and want to make you cry, by really, really restraining what they do when they <laughs> when they are in the earshot in your earshot it's it's a good measure of a friend i will tell you that much and it's a very good measure of knowing who gives a shit about how you feel so i guess that's that let me know in the comments if you've heard about misophonia. If you have any questions, feel free, feel free to ask. I will answer whatever you want because I would love to sp spread awareness about it because I know how much it helped me, despite everything, to just understand it. It also helps me kind of coexist with it. In social settings, of course, like I said, it requires more people, not just me, to help me manage it, but yeah, I think it makes it much easier for people to make concessions and agree to whims when they understand that it's just a mental disorder, that it works like that, that you're not being misbehaving that you're not misbehaving and you're not being just a fussy child you ha they ha that has to be disciplined or just a tyrant that tries to put everyone in their place because they have like, you know, ideas or whatever. So, and if you know anyone else who's dealing with it, tell me about it too, you know. Misery loves company, doesn't it? Okay, so... Uh, thank you for watching, if you got here. I hope you've learned something. I'm sorry if it was kind of disjointed. I did make notes. I tried to make this kind of organized, but like I said, this is kind of... 
yeah no annoying to me so <laughs> it's easy to start to rent and well yeah have a good day evening whatever and i'll see you next time bye